November 16, 1895, Lewiston Evening Journal, Lewiston, Maine. Delivered at Washington. Hawaii may after all become a part of the United States, and that within the coming year. Information of a trustworthy nature has been secured by the correspondent of the Chicago Times-Herald concerning the Hawaiian program to be adopted by the Friends of Annexation during the coming winter. The joint resolution will be introduced either in the House or Senate requesting the President to negotiate a treaty of annexation with the government of Hawaii. This resolution will have the sanction of the President of the Hawaiian Republic and of the new Hawaiian Minister to the United States, Mr. Hatch, who has just arrived in San Francisco en route to Washington. Still more important, it will have the approval of President Cleveland. The resolution, as introduced or amended, will provide that if the President concurs and the government of Hawaii be willing, the scheme of annexations shall include a submission of the question of joining the American Union to the voters of the island. November 28, 1898. The Day. New London, Connecticut. President's Flag. For the first time, the Chief Executive of the United States has ensign specially designed for him. For the first time since it was designed, the President's own flag waved over his head when he stood in Philadelphia at the Peace Jubilee viewing the parade. This standard was designed by Frederick D. Owen of the War Department and is the first that has been thought of or adopted by a chief executive of the United States. Each officer of the Army and Navy has his special flag, and it seemed an oversight that one has not existed for the President, who is Commander-in-Chief of both branches of the service. The flag, with which President McKinley is greatly pleased, was adopted by the War Department March 1st. It is of scarlet, with a white star in each corner. A large star in the center forms a blue field. Upon this is the coat of arms of the United States, and the stars surrounding it indicate the number of the states in the Union. This flag will be adopted at the White House and at any land station where the President may be. November 28, 1898, the day, New London, Connecticut. Uniforms of all times. Valerius Maximus, the Roman emperor, ordered the Roman soldiers to wear red so they would not be frightened at the sight of their own blood. And even now, red forms a conspicuous part of French and English uniforms. In our own army, red is not used except for facings on the ground that it attracts attention in the field, though experiments in Germany prove that a blue target is hit three times where a red one is hit once. During the Revolutionary War, each colony had its militia and the uniforms of each body were different. Later, the higher officers came to be known by the colored ribbons worn across their breasts and the lower officers by the cockade worn in their hats. In 1821, dark blue was declared to be the national uniform color for both officers and enlisted men, the only exception being scarlet coats for musicians and gray coats for cadets. Various changes took place in the shape of the clothing of the soldiers 
until 1863, when our uniforms became practically fixed, the cloth for the trousers being light blue and the facings being light blue for infantry, yellow for cavalry, and red for artillery. October 13, 1913, Berkeley Daily Gazette, Berkeley, California. Summer schools are appreciated by mountaineers. After 21 teachers had each refused in turn to teach the regular school at Irish Creek Hollow in the mountains of Virginia, two county school teachers and a 12-year-old assistant invaded the district with a camping outfit and organized a summer school and an evening school that were both better attended than any school in the past years had ever been. The experiment was so successful that other isolated communities in Virginia are to be handled in the same way. Instead of allowing those isolated districts to get along as best they may, state and county officers in Virginia are going to send to the mountain every summer the very best teachers they can secure in order to provide the educational facilities that are needed. Irish Creek Hollow is in a mountain valley in Rockridge County. It is scarcely settled and remote of access. The inhabitants are mountaineers of original stock who have intermarried as much as the law permits. They live in log cabins that are not even good log cabins. There was a school building, but for several years there had been no school. No school teacher would accept the position. In 1911, after all attempts to get a regular teacher had failed, the county superintendent persuaded two experienced teachers to go to Irish Creek Hollow and open a summer school. They carried with them tents to live in, provisions, and cooking utensils. School was opened in the old school building and the attendance exceeded all expectations. There were 80 children enrolled in morning classes and 30 to 40 adults in afternoon and evening classes. The mountaineers were so appreciative of what was done for them that summer that they built an additional schoolroom and two comfortable living rooms for the teachers. Public spirit had developed to such an extent the following year that when one of the state inspectors and the secretary of the Virginia Cooperative Education Association visited the place in the summer of 1912, they were able to organize a school and civic league and an athletic association. Practically all of the residents of the community enrolled in the civic league. An interesting feature of the work is that it reaches the adults as well as the children. A Saturday afternoon class in reading and writing for grown-ups numbered among its members old men and women with grandchildren in the morning school. In speaking of the experiment, A.C. Monahan, rural school specialist in the United States Bureau of Education says, in inaugurating this work, Virginia has undoubtedly taken a valuable step toward benefiting one of the most deserving and most neglected classes of our country. Some of our best American stock is in the mountains, and it should not be allowed to degenerate for lack of educational opportunities. The State Department of Virginia is now making a survey of the mountain sections of Virginia and proposes to conduct many summer schools in the future like this one, 
which has been held for three years in Irish Creek Hollow.